On this spotlight in Black history, Claudette Colvin. Many people credit Rosa Parks as the face in front and behind the Montgomery bus boycott. But little do most people know, it was the selfless act of resistance by Claudette Colvin that launched one of the most pivotal civil rights events for Black Americans in this nation. March 2nd, 1955 is a day in history that we should all celebrate. It was on this day that Miss Claudette Colvin, who was sitting with her three classmates in the bus section reserved for colored passengers, when a young white woman boarded the bus. The bus was crowded, so she moved to the back, hoping to take a seat. It had been Negro History Month. Miss Colvin, 15 years old at the time, was inspired by black leaders she had studied in school. Leaders like Harriet Tubman and the Underground Railroad and Sir Joyner True. Also, her class has talked about the injustices black people were experiencing daily under the Jim Crow segregation laws. The bus driver ordered Miss Colvin to give up her seat to the white passenger, but she refused. History had me glued to the seat, she said. A traffic patrol officer boarded the bus and asked why she was sitting there. She replied, I paid my fare and it's my constitutional rights. Two squad patrollers stopped the bus, boarded it, asked her to move again, but she refused. So she was arrested, put in handcuffs. Her school books flew off her lap, she recalled. They put her in the back of the squad car, took her downtown to the police station where she was formally charged. She drew courage and inspiration for refusing to give up her seat from the leaders she studied in school. I felt like so Joyner Truth was pushing down on one shoulder and Harriet Tubman was pushing down on the other, saying, Sit down, girl. I was glued to my seat. Miss Colvin explained that during Jim Crow segregation, it was against the law for black and white people to sit in the same row. In segregation law, she said, a colored person couldn't sit across the aisle from a white person. However, a white person had the freedom to sit where they wanted, including in the colored section. According to Montgomery City Code, Section 10, separation of races required. Every person operating a bus line in the city was to provide equal but separate accommodations for white people and Negroes on their buses by requiring the employees in charge to assign passenger seats in a way that separated whites from black people, except nurses in charge of white children or black domestic workers caring for the ill or elderly white people. White bus drivers by city ordinance controlled the space on public buses, including assigning seats. Often, black patrons were required to stand even if there were empty seats on the bus, especially in the sections reserved for whites only. It was obvious that white patrons violated Section 10 of the Montgomery City Segregation Code regularly. If there were no seats available in the whites only section, they would simply take a seat in the colored section. However, 
A white passenger violating the city segregation code did not result in their arrest. All I remember is that I was not going to walk off the bus voluntarily, Ms. Colvin said. The moment the jail door closed, it was like a Western movie, she recalled. And then I got scared, and panic came over me, and I started crying. Then I started saying the Lord's Prayer. The Montgomery Improvement Association's chief counsel, Fred Gray, agreed to represent Claudette Colvin. At her hearing, she was found guilty. The judge ruled that Ms. Colvin would be a ward of the state of Alabama and was placed on probation pending sentencing. The juvenile court at the time had three options in which to rule in her sentencing. One, place her in an institution. Two, place her on probation. Or three, place her under supervision. Immediately after Ms. Colvin's guilty verdict, her attorneys filed an appeal, May 6, 1955. It was difficult because people looked at me differently, Ms. Colvin told the Montgomery advisor. The people who didn't know me said that I was crazy, that I was causing trouble. Some of the parents didn't want their children to be associated with me, Ms. Colvin painfully recalled. Shortly in the aftermath, of Miss Colvin's arrest, she was approached by 43-year-old Rosa Parks, a well-known activist, secretary of the Montgomery NAACP. Later that summer, Miss Colvin participated in the NAACP youth meetings with Miss Parks. The NAACP and other civic leaders had been thinking about what to do about the Montgomery bus segregation travel laws and Claudette Colvin's act of resistance on March 2nd, 1955, and the attention it garnered provided the perfect segue. Ms. Colvin was the impetus to launch a major movement as young people are often the purveyors of social resistance movements. I took a particular interest in the girl and her case, Ms. Parks said in her 1992 memoir, My Story. She invited Ms. Colvin to the NAACP youth meetings. As a way to raise money for the movement by having Ms. Colvin speak around town about her acts of resistance and her arrest. The MIA and NAACP seized an opportunity with Ms. Colvin's notoriety after receiving press coverage to build momentum for and implement their own anti-segregation bus plan. However, Ms. Colvin became pregnant and the former Montgomery NAACP chapter head, E.D. Nixon, who was still active in civil rights and the chapter, decided an unmarried team would not be the appropriate representation in a case against segregation law. Meanwhile, the bus boycott gained momentum. Public MIA meetings called for help in carpool protests. Approximately 400 cars provided the black community in Montgomery with transportation. The MIA and other black leaders helped draft a list of demands and agreed that the bus boycott campaign would continue until these demands were met. They demanded, one, courteous treatment by bus operators, two, first come, first serve seating, and three, employment of Negro bus drivers. The demands were given to the Montgomery Bus Company but were rejected. Orzel Billingsley Jr., Peter A. Hall, and Arthur D. Shores 
filed an anti-segregation lawsuit on behalf of four women who had been harmed by bus segregation. The class action lawsuit was filed February 1956. Aurelia S. Browder versus William A. Gale. William A. Gale was the mayor of Montgomery, Alabama at the time. Aurelia S. Browder, 37, Susie McDonald, 77, Claudette Colvin, 16, Mary Louise Smith, 19, Janetta Reese, were all named plaintiffs in the lawsuit. However, outside intimidation convinced Ms. Reese to withdraw from the case almost as soon as it was filed. Let me fill you in on the events which led up to these four women following the class action lawsuit. On March the 2nd, 1955, 15-year-old high school student and NAACP Youth Council member Claudette Colvin was arrested for refusing to give up her seat. She is credited as being one of the first black people arrested for refusing to give up their seat on the Montgomery City bus lines eight months before Rosa Parks. On April 29, 1955, Aurelia S. Broder, entrepreneur and seamstress, was ordered to give up her seat to a white woman. She replied, I am not going to move out of my seat. I am not going to move anywhere. I got the privilege to sit here like anybody else. She was arrested and held in jail for more than two hours fined $14 and released. On October 21, 1955, 18-year-old Mary Louise Smith was returning home by way of Montgomery City Bus. After Ms. Smith boarded and was seated, a white passenger had no place to sit. Ms. Smith was ordered to give up her seat. She refused. I was not going to stand for almost a mile or more to get down to my next destination, Ms. Smith said. She was arrested, charged for failure to obey segregation orders, and given a $9 fine, which her father paid. Also on October the 21st, 1955, Susie McDonald, a widow at the time, in her 70s, who walked with a cane, was light-skinned enough to be mistaken for white by bus operators though she enjoyed correcting this misconception. She was forced by a white Montgomery City bus driver to give up her seat to a white passenger. She was arrested for violating bus segregation law. On December the 1st, 1955, eight months after Claudette Colvin, seven months after Aurelia Broder, a month and a half after Mary Louise Smith and Susie McDonald resisted bus segregation, Rosa Parks staged a sit-in by refusing to give up her seat. However, this act was not spontaneous like the previous acts of resistance. It was a planned action put together by the NAAC and other black civic leaders. Fred Gray, who bailed Ms. Parks out of jail and represented her in trial, lost her case on a technicality. My research leads me to conclude this may be why she was not a plaintiff in this president's setting class action lawsuit. Ms. Parks' role may have been to be the marketing aspect of the bus boycott and the face to push a civil rights agenda. In March 1956, Ms. Colvin gave birth to her first baby boy, Raymond. Ms. Colvin was labeled a troublemaker for taking a stance against bus segregation and was snubbed in her community. Sadly, two years later, she left Montgomery moved in with her sister in the Bronx, New York, 
She struggled to make ends meet until 1969 when she was hired as a nurse's aide in a Manhattan nursing home. She worked there for 35 years until she retired in 2004. In June 1956, halfway through the bus boycott, a three-judge panel ruled in Broder versus Gale that Alabama's bus segregation laws at both the state and the city level violated the U.S. Constitution's 14th Amendment, which guaranteed equal protection under the law. The city appealed the ruling to the U.S. Supreme Court. Thurgood Marshall and several other NAACP attorneys helped plan the legal strategy surrounding the city's appeal of Broder v. Gale to the Supreme Court and the challenge to Alabama statutes allowing segregation in the operation of the bus system. Brown v. Board of Education, which overturned the constitutional underpinnings of segregation in 1954 by declaring that separate but equal facilities were inherently unequal was used as the legal precedence in the Broder versus Gale case. Aurelia Broder, Susie McDonald, Claudette Golden, and Mary Louise Smith bravely sat as witnesses in open court withstanding questions from a defense that was intent on proving that their actions and convictions against segregation were not their own. Defense attorneys contended that the women were not acting on their own volition, but were simply being used by the movement, mainly Martin Luther King Jr., to push the desegregation agenda. As if their own mistreatment and abuse they suffered on public buses did not prove that they could reach a conclusion about segregation. The defense seemed to suggest that living under the iron hand of Jim Crow from one generation to the next and being conscientious and capable citizens had not already given them the right to question the segregation laws. Their testimony won over the justices. The Supreme Court affirmed the ruling in Broder versus Gale on November the 13th, 1956. On December the 20th, 1956, the Supreme Court ordered Montgomery and the state of Alabama to end bus segregation permanently. Martin Luther King Jr. and the Montgomery Improvement Association voted to end the 381-day Montgomery bus boycott. When asked why her story was not as well known, that is, until recently, and why everyone gives Rosa Parks so much credit for acts of defiance and bus segregation, Ms. Colvin reveals that the NAACP and other civic leaders felt Ms. Parks would be a better icon because she, quote, was an adult, end quote. They didn't think teenagers were reliable. Also, Ms. Colvin believed that they thought Ms. Park had the better image. Quote, her skin and hair texture were the kind that people associated with the middle class, end quote, Ms. Colvin told NPR. She fit the profile. In 2021, Ms. Colvin filed a petition to have her 1955 arrest record cleared. A judge in Montgomery granted the request. At age 82, Claudette Colvin's record, an arrest in 1955 for not giving up her seat on the Montgomery City bus line to a young white woman, was expunged. My name was cleared. I'm no longer a juvenile delinquent at age 82, she joyously said. Rosa Parks may have garnered the fame, but Claudette Colvin, Aurelia Browder, Susie McDonald, and Mary Louise Smith desegregated public buses. They changed the game. 
give them their flowers, and say their names. Thank you, Ms. Claudette Colvin. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel.